tell you about the important step a local group took today to help our local homeless. And it's the weekend, but it is not looking all that dry, unfortunately. We're going to tell you when you can expect rain tomorrow. But first tonight, a disturbing trend of shootings in the River Region. We've seen 14 in just the last 20 days. And there are some more concerning numbers as we take a closer look. Of those recent 14 shootings, eight of them have been in Richmond County. Four of those 14 shootings have turned deadly. And there's still no arrest in eight of those shootings. Nick Proto live for us right now in the studio to compare these shootings with the same time a year ago. Nick. We take a look at this map, it shows you exactly where those 14 shootings have happened in the last three weeks. With so many happening in Richmond County, people who live in Augusta have taken notice. Now some are trying to do something about it. 21 shootings in 35 days in Richmond County. Deputies are still looking for a suspect. One of them happening here on Grand Boulevard. While some may have gotten scared from the incident, new neighbor Sherlanda McCain got inspired. That's what fire in front of my feet because I got a vision for this area. And so when I heard that, I said, okay, that's a, that's a fireball. McCain owns Piecing Life Together, an organization that helps people get affordable housing. I see potential. I see awesome potential for anyone who has the heart to help the individuals who need the help. She found help in Derek Morgan and Troy Yuki. The long-term goal here is to actually build new homes and have people move into the neighborhood, not as renters, but as invested people into the neighborhood that makes a, a very stable neighborhood. Morgan lived in this neighborhood back in the 50s and 60s. He says a lot of the houses here haven't been renovated since, and they're trying to change that. We're trying to, you know, get some new updated more houses on this street that'll, that'll uh, kind of uplift the neighborhood. So far, they've updated a few houses in the community, including McCain's, but they say this is only the beginning there are big things to come. The small group of King is a historical area, and it needs to be brought back up. We're going to do that. It's going to take us a little minute, but we're going to do it. McCain tells me they're looking to start a neighborhood association there. She says they're actually meeting with the Neighborhood Alliance Association this weekend to discuss the next steps in bringing this community some new life. Nick, thank you. There was actually an armed robbery on North Augusta's Greenway, but no shots were fired in that case. But we're learning today about an arrest in the case. Officers say 25-year-old Joshua Emanuel Jones is now in custody in Richmond County. North Augusta detectives working with Richmond County deputies to arrest Jones at his home in Augusta. Investigators say there's still work to be done to charge him with that Greenway robbery and extradite him to Aiken County to face that charge. All the way on the other side of the country, a mother originally from Augusta found murdered in California. 26-year-old Savannah Tiberche is one of two victims in a horrific double murder out of Bonkerville, a suburb of Sacramento. The other victim is a 15-year-old girl. 29-year-old Raymond Weber is charged in connection to both of those murders. Police say last Saturday he live-streamed himself in an apartment with a gun and two women lying on the floor. When officers got there, Weber barricaded himself inside. Eventually, the SWAT team got inside and found those two women dead. Savannah leaves behind a four-year-old son and her family is now raising money to try to bring her body back to Augusta so they can lay her to rest. That's finished in just a little bit. Riley, thank you. More jobs created in Georgia and our cyber center is playing a role. A nonprofit there got $250,000 from the state to start an entrepreneur's program. They'll train hundreds of people and it will help create up to 800 jobs across the state. Brady Trapnell tells us what this could mean for our local economy. Creating small businesses is what they do here at the clubhouse in the Georgia Cyber Center. But they're taking their method to a larger scale to take on the economic challenges of the pandemic. Entrepreneurship is the single biggest job creator in America. Eric Parker runs the clubhouse, a nonprofit startup incubator at the Cyber Center. His team is getting ready to train 250 entrepreneurs across the state with a goal to create 800 jobs. If we want to come out of the economic crisis from COVID, we have to support entrepreneurs in our community. The program is meant to do that in partnership with the state's workforce development program. A $250,000 grant from the state will fund it. It's meant for anyone unemployed or underemployed because of COVID-19. When they complete their training program, they'll be eligible for capital from local banks and investors to grow their business. Here in Augusta, Parker says they'll train 50 entrepreneurs and create 40 new businesses, which should create 200 new jobs. The clubhouse says this effort is unique. Five cities will be involved, all aiming to give a boost to a hurting economy, trying to fight back in a pandemic. When we complete
complete this, we should have a robust system to support entrepreneurs, not just this year, but every year moving forward. If you want to get involved in this program, you can reach out directly to the clubhouse. We'll have their information on our website, wrdw.com. Reporting in Augusta, Brady Trapnell on your side. Now, the clubhouse says their training program will be 16 weeks and involve a six-month mentorship. Once all that is complete, investors already lined up, standing by to help you get your business off the ground. AU Health vaccinating more people on the South Carolina side today. This is the third day their new clinic at Aiken Tech has been vaccinating people. AU Health made the official announcement today. They say this site is a big step in the local fight against COVID-19. Getting the vaccine to every area resident is our top priority. And this location will greatly increase our ability to do exactly that. A recent CDC report shows nationwide only about 5% of the vaccine doses so far have gone to African Americans. More than 60% of those doses have gone to white people. Dr. Kuhl with AU Health says they've been working hard to reach as many people as they can for the vaccine. Undoubtedly a disproportionate effect on communities of color and one of the reasons that it's so important for us to make certain that we're vaccinating those most at-risk populations and it's paying off. Their numbers so far show AU Health vaccinating more than 1,800 African Americans, 1,700 Caucasians. Dr. Kuhl credits that to leaders, local leaders, including religious leaders in the African American community who are stepping forward to get the shot. Our local hospitals appear to be continuing their downward trend with COVID-19 patients. Two fewer patients at University Hospital than yesterday. The last time University had fewer than 73 patients was back on December 18th. No updates yet today from AU Health or Doctors Hospital, but they have also been seeing decreases the past few days. Neither have had this few patients since December. Deputies are asking for your help this evening to find this missing 15-year-old who hasn't been seen in about three days now. Renaja Paul last seen Tuesday on Bertram Court in Augusta. That's off Washington Road over behind the Wells Fargo. They say it's possible she's still in the area. If you know where she might be, call the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. A local group stepping up to help our homeless veterans today. Just this week, I got the leader said our homeless population was the highest they have ever seen. Tradisha Woodard went to see how they are helping. I helped touch his hands and looked into his eyes and said, there is a life better for you. Despite the gloomy skies and wet streets, forces united in the VA had one mission, counting the veterans who are homeless and getting them the hope they need. It's raining, it's cold. This is what the, the individuals live in day in, day out. The numbers in the last count showed over 400 homeless people in Augusta alone. 31 of them were veterans. But with the pandemic, officials expect that number to rise. That we believe this number is gonna go up. We know we're getting more and more calls of people in hotels needing help. Um, you know, people losing their housing. District 1 Commissioner Jordan Johnson also came out to support. He believes there's a tremendous amount of work needed to be done to help the homeless in our area. I think that, you know, a, a lack of access to information has a lot to do with, you know, sort of why folks aren't getting help as quickly as, as they should. Uh, folks just don't know that the help is available. A small step today, giving out necessities and taking note of what resources are needed, all in efforts of fighting the long battle of getting help to the people who need it the most. Not one individual deserves to live on the streets, whether it's mental illness or substance abuse or just, you know, a hard uh, knock in life. Tradisha Woodard, on your side. And Commissioner Johnson is working to put together a task force to help the homeless made up of Richmond County teachers, activists, and concerned citizens. Forces United is always looking for donations and volunteers. You can head to their website, forcesunited.org. A debate today between the two Republican candidates running for North Tourism. An artist in Thompson has found his own way to honor Black History Month. He's doing it the best way he knows, painting icons of yesterday and today. Sidney Heiberger introduces us to this artist and finds out what inspired him to, to do the work. Some people capture history with their words. Others take photos. But Josh Thomas captures history with every brush stroke. Shown and learned about 
talk about? It started as an assignment for his art students at Thompson Middle School. Create some piece of art that celebrates a person or moment in black history. But for himself, he took the assignment a step further, realizing there's no reason a teacher can't continue to learn. And maybe that will inspire others to maybe create artwork or maybe look up the individual that I'm, I'm drawing at the time. He's featured greats like Barack Obama, Harriet Tubman, and Amanda Gorman. Today, it's Hank Aaron. His list of names changes often as people make suggestions and he learns more about black history himself. People posting online, social media, people I've never really heard of or know about, I'll say, hey, maybe I'll, maybe I should feature this person. In a time where division and racial tension can dominate the conversation, Josh Thomas believes why not spread a little bit of love. Maybe small things like my portrait series can lead towards a better America. In Thompson, Sydney Heiberger on your side. Now that's making a difference where you are. Josh says later this month we can look forward to seeing Breonna Taylor, Chadwick Boseman, and Emmett Till. It's great looking work and at the end yeah. of it all he says he hopes to have a small art show or maybe a book one day with all those finished products. We wish him well. Yeah, very good artwork. Some more Black History Month events to take in this weekend. There's Culture Fest at the indoor flea market on North Leg Road. They're going to have food and music and shopping over there. In a couple of weekends, the Augusta Players putting on that live stream performance of the Mountaintop. You can buy those tickets online to watch that. And Augusta University has a Black History Month research guide on their website with books and websites and a lot of interviews. A Columbia County girl using her stashed coins to help animals. 11-year-old Emery Siegler counted up all the pennies she saved up, and it added up to about $216. That is really good, but that's not all. Her dad matched that donation, and then so did Textron, the company where he works ended up being about $680 for the best buddies rescue in Augusta. That is really special. You never know. You go go count that change. You can make a difference yeah. just like her. A penny does add up yeah. in a hurry. Right? It does. Great stuff there. For the weekend, we are expecting a wet Saturday, but Sunday currently looks dry for us. We'll have an update on that weekend forecast for you coming up. And hundreds of you donated your Christmas trees to the Army Corps. Great news if you like to fish because they're going in the lake. We're going to tell you why and where they're going. All night. Well, if you remember all the Christmas trees donated to the Army Corps of Engineers, they use those trees to create fish habitats in Clarks Hill Lake. Yes, they do year after year. They make great fishing spots. And Riley Hill tells us how many trees the Corps collected this year and where they're going. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers collected close to 700 Christmas trees this year to help improve fish habitat across the lake. Twine around the uh, end of the limbs here and then place it on the concrete and drop it in. Three, two, one. We distribute the ramps that we had listed, posted like Care Creek, uh, Clarksville, you know, the local ramps basically. The Corps of Engineers has exact coordinates of the Christmas trees on their website. Christmas trees make great habitats, but only last about three years before they decompose. That's why the Corps has started adding bamboo and recycled materials to their arsenal. What you're looking at is just old irrigation pipes that we've utilized from here from leftover projects. The recycled materials can last for decades. The bamboo doesn't last as long, but does outlast the Christmas trees. They last up to about 10 years without breaking down as long as it's underwater. These structures are all different, but attract the same general bait fish that then attract larger fish like bass, striper, and hybrids. The Corps does want fishermen to know that they need a permit to drop their own structure in the lake. A permit's totally free, but it's just something to keep track of, of uh, stuff that's being placed in the lake. To get a permit, you will have to call the Corps at 864-333-1100. And the Corps does have all the locations of the different habitats online if you are looking to get out there and go fish. But, Riley, is it going to be a good weekend out on the water? I think I'm six. One person dies every 36 seconds from cardiovascular disease. Today, we are remembering them on National Wear Red Day. The American Heart Association says it's a small thing that could have a big impact. You know, if they have heard of Wear Red Day, they see people wearing red, and a lot of people wearing red, and they're like, oh, what's going on? And then they can kind of sit
Tommy and Seen that, so come hang out online. Also, in March is the annual CSRA Heart Walk. It's also virtual this year. Proceeds go to the American Heart Association. We are happy to take part in good luck tonight with the ball. Well, if you're looking for a job, there's a hiring event this weekend for several manufacturing companies. The drive through hiring event tomorrow from 10 until 2 at the Augusta Mall by the Dillard's parking lot. The companies include Kimberly Clark, Textron, GIW, and John Deere. They're looking for machine operators, assemblers, and foundry workers. Again, that's happening tomorrow. Friendly competition and a chance for a local high schooler to create job opportunities. 21 students from Evans, Grosstown, and Harlem High Schools all competed in an auto skills competition today. There were three different levels. Each group judged on their automotive and problem-solving skills. These were the winners. Evans High School running away with it. Local businesses also there talking to students about future internships and career opportunities. Yes. But those jobs are certainly in demand right now. Jobs ready for every single one of those students. Locals in the Super Bowl, locals doing well on the PGA Tour. Mike's next with a look at our guys playing Sunday and a look at North Augusta's Matt Neesmith doing good things on the golf course.